I'm explaining a film from 2007 titled National Treasure Book of Secrets. Spoilers ahead. Enjoy the content. Five days after the Civil War's conclusion, in 1865, the film opens in Washington, D.C. Puzzle specialists Thomas Gates and his son Charles Carroll Gates were approached by John Wilkes Booth and Michael Allen. In his diary, John writes a code that contains the mysterious information, rid the debt that all men pay. John requests Thomas to decipher this code. Shortly after, while he waits for Thomas to finish solving the clue, Michael encourages John to fulfill his primary objective. Following Michael's advice, John goes to Ford's theater where he reveals his plot to kill President Lincoln. Everyone is shocked to learn of the shooting, including Thomas, who discovers the guys in front of him are traitors. Additionally, he concludes that the diary's riddle is a treasure map. To prevent the treasure from falling into the wrong hands, he tears up the note and tries to burn it. Unfortunately, John discovers his plan, takes the remaining paper, and kills him. Years later, Thomas Gates' descendants still remember the incident. Ben Gates, Thomas's great-grandson, spreads the story of his ancestors' heroism in stopping the traitors and obtaining clues about the treasure. Ben's account is abruptly called into question, though, by Mitch Wilkinson, who asserts that John and Thomas Gates actually plotted together. The remaining pages from John's journal are used by Mitch as proof. Startled, Ben asks Mitch to look at the historical artifact, the museum confirms that the object fits, but more investigation is needed to determine its genuineness. Ben and his father Patrick are obsessed with the narrative after their meeting with Mitch. Patrick recalls the specifics, but Mitch's compelling evidence casts doubt on their lineage. The Gates family's reputation may be damaged by this plot. Ben promises to clean his family's name, driven by his determination to demonstrate that the journal's contents represent a treasure map. Without wasting time, Ben meets his friend Riley, an author of a history book with theories about American historical conspiracies. Unfortunately, Riley's life is not going well. His book isn't selling, and the government has confiscated his prized Ferrari due to unpaid taxes. Ben asks Riley to help him unlock his house door as his ex-girlfriend Abigail has changed the passcode after their breakup. Ben needs to retrieve Abigail's employee card, as she is the director of document preservation, to access John's diary. Before Ben could leave the house, Abigail returns and catches him. Cornered, he explains his problem and asks her to examine the historical item. Reluctantly, she agrees because he promises to give her an antique. Initially, the examination yields no results, but upon closer inspection, she finds clues hidden on the back of the paper. The next day, Abigail's fellow museum employees are set to announce the discovery of this historical object implicating Ben's great-grandfather in President Lincoln's assassination. Abigail's fears are confirmed and Mitch publicly announces that Thomas Gates was the mastermind behind Lincoln's death using Booth's diary pages kept by the Wilkinson family as evidence. This news reaches the FBI, but Agent Peter Saduki, a friend of Ben's, can't believe it. He commands a background inquiry into Mitch since he believes the man is acting suspiciously. After a few days, the FBI learns Mitch is an antiquities merchant and hired soldier. Peter becomes even more skeptical as a result, wondering why Mitch chose to donate the historical artifact to the museum rather than selling it for a high price to a wealthy collector. Peter believes Mitch has his sights set on something more worthwhile than cash. Ben asks Riley to use a unique program to decode certain hidden clues he finds in the journal. Riley was first unable to make any sense out of the few hints. However, after discussing it with his father, Ben discovers the clue reads, Liberty Lady, referring to a French person who created the Statue of Liberty. They realize there are three statues of liberty in the world, and the one mentioned in the clue is the Statue of Liberty in Paris. Ben and Riley take off for Paris the next day. They scour the Statue of Liberty for hints using a tiny remote-controlled aircraft equipped with a camera. When patrolling cops see their actions, they are nearly banished. Riley discovers a letter on the statue, but Ben is able to divert the attention of the police. 
This message points them in the direction of a hint regarding Queen Victoria, mentioning one of the resolute desks, which is housed in Buckingham Palace. They leave without delay and go to England. In the meantime, Ben's father is attacked by Mitch and his men in an attempt to clone his mobile phone so they can intercept any details Ben offers. Ben and Riley parted ways in England in order to enter the Queen's office covertly to locate hints about the Resolute Desk. Riley taps into the CCTV to monitor Ben during his mission. Abigail unexpectedly shows up to help. She causes a scene to distract others, leading to both her and Ben being arrested. In the holding room, they reconcile and escape through a dumb waiter. Guided by Riley, they find the Queen's office and discover a secret code on the desk. After figuring out the puzzle, Ben pulls out a wooden plank bearing many symbols. Security guards discover their escape at that exact moment. Riley sets off a fake alarm, which lets them leave the palace without incident. They consider the meanings of the plank outside the palace, but quickly discover Mitch and his men are pursuing them. They run away and Mitch's goons come after them. Ben uses a speed camera to capture a picture of the plank during the chase because his phone is broken. Then, in order to prevent Mitch's men from pursuing them anymore, he tosses the plank into the river. He then returns to his father's home to interpret the hint. Unfortunately, Patrick admits he can't translate it, but he knows an expert who can, Ben's mother Emily, whom he hasn't spoken to in over 30 years, but agrees to on his son's request. They meet Emily, a University of Maryland instructor, the following day. She's chilly at first, but after hearing the justification, she agrees to assist. She solves a portion of the clue, but she discovers that the directions are lacking. Since the Resolute desks were constructed in pairs, they had to locate the White House's hay desk, the opposite desk. Ben and Abigail head to the White House for an Easter celebration without wasting any time. Ben meets Connor, a White House employee who develops feelings for Abigail. After first objecting, Connor grants them in after Abigail poses as interested in seeing the President's office. Since the President's office is closed to the public, Connor warns them. Inside, with a distraction, Ben quickly searches the desk but discovers the plank with the clue is missing. After they leave the White House, he informs Riley about the missing plank. Riley brings up the contents of the Secret Presidential Book, a book that is rumored to have been written down by presidents and contains a variety of secrets, maybe including details about the Hay Desk and the secret code. Sadly, nobody save the president is aware of where the book is. After realizing he has no way to contact the president, Ben comes up with the audacious plan to abduct him. He's planning to entice the president to the Vernon Hotel for his impending birthday celebration, and he'll use a covert tunnel to make it happen. Ben's plan is made possible the next day when Riley and Patrick reserve every hotel in Washington, D.C., so compelling the president's event to take place at the Vernon Hotel. In the evening, Ben meets the president, who knows him as a Gates family member. Ben, knowing the president likes George Washington, shows a map that reveals a secret tunnel nearby. Intrigued, the president follows Ben to the tunnel, ordering his bodyguards to stay outside. Ben traps both himself and the president after entering. The president is shocked as he listens to Ben's question concerning the purported secret presidential book. Ben's escape plan reassures the president, who at first is reluctant to give in. Ben tells the president where the book is located in the Library of Congress and the secret code to discover it. Ben gets a warning from the president before he leaves, he can't publicly defend him if the operation fails. To the library go Ben, Riley, and Abigail. Knowing the arrangement well, Abigail guides them to the secret book's shelf. Although Ben discovers a secret code, it is first invisible. The book emerges after entering the code, proving the rumors. Ben discovers fresh information on the Hay desk within. As the FBI starts searching for him, he and his friends quickly leave, splitting up to avoid detection. Abigail nearly gets caught but manages to escape, and Ben soon joins them outside safely. Meanwhile, Mitch learns of Ben's new clue and threatens Emily, Ben's mother, to translate the code, 
Emily is unwilling to fly under duress and lies about the clue since she thinks Mitch is a treasure seeker. In the belief that Mount Rushmore contains the riches, Mitch accompanies Emily there the next day. Mitch threatens Emily after seeing that Ben and his buddies arrive earlier. Ben implies that Mitch will get caught as well and threatens to turn him into a cooperator by saying the cops are hunting him. Ben presses Mitch to provide the next clue in a rough region. Ben interprets the hint, concluding they must wet the rocks, after realizing Mitch had made Emily translate it. Abigail discovers that the entry is marked with a bird symbol. A cliff collapses and a secret entry is revealed when Ben triggers a concealed mechanism. They enter, but the entrance seals behind them, trapping them inside, separated from Ben's parents. They find themselves in a precarious floor trap. They balance carefully while Abigail discovers a nearby ladder. Mitch climbs first, followed by Abigail and Riley, leaving Ben last. Though Mitch initially left, he returns to help Ben, saving him. Next, they come onto a big reservoir room. They have to reduce the water level in order to find the following clue, which they find concealed underwater while searching. After pursuing the hint from the reservoir, they eventually locate City of Gold, an all-gold Native American metropolis. Ben's parents also show up to the location in the meanwhile. Ben's great-grandfather, Thomas Gates, is shown to be innocent by the finding. At last, Mitch owns up to his mistakes and issues an apology for disparaging Thomas Gates. Mitch had succeeded in his scheme to get Wilkinson officially recognized as City of Gold, discoverer by tricking Ben into going in pursuit of the wealth. Their happiness is short-lived, though, as they had to leave as a way as the property begins to flood. Patrick notices water flowing down and believes it is their way out. However, when they attempt to leave, the stream intensifies, requiring someone to hold the door open. Ben sacrifices himself so the others can escape, while Mitch, trying to hold the door, is crushed by a falling stone. Ben follows Mitch's instructions to give the Wilkinson family credit for discovering City of Gold before he passes away. They manage to finally exit the cave. Ben is detained on suspicion of abducting the president, but he is cleared when the president testifies that Ben protected him when the tunnel unintentionally closed. Afterwards, Ben, his group, and Mitch are credited with the finding of City of Gold. After his record is cleansed, Thomas Gates is praised as a hero. When the water is gone, Patrick and Emily examine City of Gold with great curiosity. Abigail and Ben mend their connection. The president gives Riley back his Ferrari and asks Ben to figure out something that's mysteriously written on page 47 of Riley's journal. Thanks for watching. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and stay tuned for more.